People actually think Goku and Saitama are overpowered? Are you serious? I guess they clearly don't know who Accelerator is. If somehow you don't know who this beast of an anorexic mentally deranged albino kid is, then consider myself shocked. Since Accelerator has a reputation in the anime fandom for having a broken ass ability, vector manipulation or vector control. Vectors being any quantity in physics which have both direction and magnitude. Now I know most of you watching this video were sleeping in physics class during your school years, myself included, and don't have a clue about what I just said. Therefore, allow me to simplify it. Does something have the capacity to move and has a definable size? Then it has vectors, and Accelerator can influence that object with his OP ability. He is literally physics Jesus. You might be thinking, that has to be the most nerdy ability of all time. He kills people with physics? Whatever happened to screaming while firing a giant ass explosion with no logic behind it? Now that I've given you the most general and bare bones explanation of his ability, I want to go into detail about each factor of Accelerator's applications of vector control and his feats in the story, just to demonstrate why he's broken. I would say please nerf, but he literally did get nerfed in the story, and later becoming even more powerful than he was pre-nerf. Seems very fair and balanced. Accelerator's trademark ability is his reflection, automatically redirecting any attack or anything harmful which have vectors either away or returning it to the sender. This makes Accelerator nigh invincible to 99% of physical attacks, as the invisible shield which redirects attacks covers his entire body and is active 24-7. It automatically works for him even if he doesn't react to an incoming attack. It also passively reflects ultraviolet rays which travel at light speed, which is why this guy looks so pale. He's not getting a tan anytime soon. Now, I know what you're thinking. Surely there has to be an upper limit to this ability, that there has to be a strong enough force that would be able to break through the shield. Well, not really. Hang on, I'm not going to argue Accelerator has a no limits fallacy. I'm not like the Saitama fans, okay? The strongest attack we have seen Accelerator reflect was a spell that was said to rival another universal tier weapon. Maybe even hyperversal if you want to wank it. Although he was given knowledge by a demon known as Clipper Puzzle 545, which gave him the capacity to do this. He still stopped the attack known as Magic Flaming Sword via his own shield. I made a video a long ass time about how he did this, which definitely doesn't live up to my current production standards. And Accelerator can also partially reflect an omnidimensional severing spell, with it only being able to affect him if it hit the exact spot where the shield begins to exist. Now, we don't know how many dimensions exist in Index, but we do know there are at least 11 in the physical world, along with other dimensions outside it. Admittedly, there have been times when Accelerator's shield has been bypassed due to the attacks either surpassing the laws of physics in the case of Iwas or using an unknown set of physical laws in the case of Kakine's Dark Matter. Despite Dark Matter hurting him initially, Accelerator was able to quickly analyse the properties of the ability's vectors and quickly apply this new data to his reflection, making him immune to Kakine's attacks. So yeah, Accelerator can be like Kentish's. I really want to play this song, but I don't want to receive the copyright nuke of Doom. Now we move on to something you gamers all love, insta-kills. Since Accelerator is capable of killing his opponent with just one mere touch by reversing the blood flow of his victim, he can make their body explode from the inside. Of course, this is only possible against enemies that have blood or have a biological body, as otherwise this ability will do absolutely nothing against them. But fear not, Accelerator has shown off other absolutely insane offensive applications of his ability, such as the time he slowed the rotation of the planet by 5 minutes, implying he could literally destroy Earth itself if he tried hard enough. I also made another video talking about this feat specifically, if you're interested. I think I've done enough talking for now. There's only one other person I know who can do Accelerator justice, and that is... Wait, hold up. Was that my cue to start talking? Oh, it was? Oh, okay, okay, okay. <clears throat>
Ladies and gentlemen, today I am also going to be talking about the Vector God Accelerator. For those who do not know me, my name is Othinus and I am a guest here thanks to Aeon. First and foremost, thank you so much Aeon for letting me talk about Accelerator on your channel. Homie knows me so well and he knows how much I love Accelerator. I mean, my own channel was built around Accelerator soloing Goku. But enough of all that, I am here to talk about Accelerator and his Platinum Wings. I want to make it very clear from the start that I'm only here to talk about the feats Accelerator did while he had his Platinum Wings. So I will not be covering his so-called imaginary vectors or the conceptual invisible spears he made when he was fighting Nethfist. I only bring these up now because they were in New Testament 22 which is where Accelerator did in fact get his Platinum Wings. Now there are a couple things that I want to talk about and the first one being Accelerator embedding a third artificial magic tree into the world. This was way more severe and this can actually change things way more fundamentally than Angel Fall. By Accelerator embedding the third tree which was known as Clonoth, this actually can be seen as Accelerator changing the laws of the world. By adding this artificial third tree to the cosmos, Accelerator ended up shaking the whole galaxy. Along with his platinum wings, Accelerator gained the ability of astral projection and soul manipulation. By controlling the laws of microism and macroism, he was able to force Koron's on soul out of her body. These two feats that were were given to Accelerator are major upgrades from when he started at the beginning of the series and I'm glad I got to talk about them. Accelerator being able to have access to soul manipulation and law manipulation are huge upgrades. Based off Accelerator using and being able to control the laws of microism and macroism which are crucial existences and mechanisms to supernatural powers in the Tuaru universe, I believe that this does in fact give him control over the laws of supernatural powers to some extent although Kamachi has not actually Actually written that in the light novels. So with that being said, take the law of manipulation as you will, whether you think it's limited law of manipulation or whether you think Excel is completely busted like myself, it's really all on you how you want to interpret the law of manipulation. Aeon, thank you so much for having me on your YouTube channel. It was really fun to talk about Accelerator and his platinum wings, and it was really fun to talk about Accelerator and his law of manipulation ability. Also, hey, all you beautiful people, make sure you subscribe to my buddy Aeon, dude's a fucking legend. Thanks Ophanus for eloquently describing what makes Accelerator so broken. Accelerator originally had black and white wings, which were able to disintegrate matter upon contact, and he was able to actually influence the vectors of objects without needing a touch, like he did versus Kakina, where he turned him into Diglett. I've seen enough JAVs to know what happens when someone gets stuck like that. His white wings were also able to seemingly heal himself after his body was internally exploding from using magic, although he was controlling his own blood flow, keeping it within his body so he wouldn't die. And in this form he also nullified Fiamma's magic nuke, which was going to blow up all of Eurasia, so that makes Accelerator even more harder to kill. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to help me get to 20,000 subscribers as I'll be doing a Toma version of this video at that milestone, where I will be investigating if Toma is truly overpowered or if he has plot armor. So if that video interests you, make sure you subscribe for more. I need to briefly touch upon the tree of Klonoff and Platinum Wings, which Offenus mentioned earlier. After the will of the Misica Network and Clipper Puzzle 545 collaborated, to merge their power and knowledge, Accelerator managed to use an invisible power which covered the entire world as a weapon against the magic god Neptis, who could seemingly no longer regenerate after being attacked by this power. Giving Accelerator regen null is kinda overkill. overkill. This invisible power was later revealed to be the Tree of Klonoff, a magic related concept which is the true essence of the Misica network, which I explain more in detail in this video. Accelerator also channeled the power of shaking the galaxy into a physical strike, which pushed out Kuronzon's soul. By accessing the Tree of Klonoff, Accelerator was also able to cross the Abyss of Sephiroth, giving him a wealth of magical knowledge and purifying his mind and soul to arrive beyond the sphere of Keter, which is the ranking of the gods. I don't think we have even seen the full capabilities of Accelerator with his platinum wings. But hey, once he finally stops his edgelord phase and breaks out of prison, we might get more of a taste. Oh wait, what am I saying? He's always been an edgelord. The last thing I want to touch upon is Alistair's phone. 
which was given to Accelerator, and it allows him to use futuristic scientific weapons in conjunction with his Esper power. These include firing an optical laser beam from a satellite in space, spawning genetically modified giant man-eating plants, and something called Mimosa, which are similar to nanobots and consume the cells of their target, turning them basically into nothing. While these weapons aren't the most powerful in Accelerator's arsenal, they do give him more options to use in a fight, so that he's no longer the one-trick pony reliant on his reflection, which he used to be. Plus, it makes Accelerator much more harder to fight when you got a laser moving at the speed of light raining down upon you while trying to focus on fighting him at the same time. I think that's covered mostly everything that makes Accelerator a force to be reckoned with. And yes, he has been smacked up a number of times, but we don't talk about that here, okay? Make sure you check out Offenus's channel if you enjoy really super serious versus battle related videos where he likes to scream more than Goku. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.